Hi there. Today we're going to be talking about lipolysis. Lipolysis means fat breakdown. Uh, L-I-P-O, lipo, think of liposuction. Uh, that means fat. And lysis, that's just used a lot in biology to, just to mean breakdown. There we go. Hopefully give you my handwriting. Uh, this fat breakdown is a very important reaction in cheese. It's found across almost every cheese variety. And its intensity and how much goes on really determines some of the flavors you'll get. Even cheeses like cheddar depend on lipolysis or much of their flavors. And I just like to think about how plain tasting milk is. And at the end of it, after the fat is broken down, you get some really interesting flavors in all sorts of cheeses. And we'll highlight some cheeses and what makes them extra special and how fat breakdown really helps them get their characteristic flavors. Before we jump into it too far, uh, let's talk a little bit where fat is in milk and how it's situated. Uh, fat occurs in these little globular structures. If you zoom into milk, that's what they look like. And what's important here is that they are in these little intact structures. Uh, they're actually protected by a little layer that keeps the, the fat inside protected from, from attack from that breakdown. So intact milk, kept well, not abused. You won't get much fat breakdown, right? Milk will start to taste just like milk. If you abuse that milk, you can cause fat breakdown to happen. So here we're zoomed in even more into those fat globules. And here if we zoom in even more, we'll start to see what I'm talking about, this protective layer. Uh, this layer is called the milk fat globule membrane. And it's, it's pretty interesting as a quick aside in the biology world. It's what you call a lipid trilayer. There's three layers of fat here protecting this triglyceride core. And this is what we're concerned about. That fat in here is what's susceptible to attack and breakdown. With those layers intact, it's safe, it's fine. Not much can get to it. But if that layer is disrupted, enzymes can get in there and break down the fat. And we don't want that. And how's that fat layer disrupted? Well, it can be you abuse the milk, you pump it too hard, and maybe you homogenize it a lot, breaking up those fat globules into smaller pieces and breaking up those membranes while you're doing it. So what do we actually mean when we refer to lipolysis? Well, it has to do with the breakdown of triglycerides. So this core of fat in here is found in the form of triglycerides, and that's what I'm trying to demonstrate over here. If you look at the name triglyceride, you can sort of see how we came to this structure. The tri refers to three fatty acids. That's what these guys are here. You know, one, two, three fatty acids, and they're all connected by a glycerol molecule. In intact, this doesn't have much flavor, right? You know, intact fat, intact fat has not much flavor, right? Uh, my handwriting's a little rough there. Hopefully, you can work it out. Just listen to me instead. But enzymes called lipases, again, the LIP fat and ASC just usually means enzyme. Lipases are what cause fat to break down. It's an enzyme that causes lipolysis to happen. These lipases attack these triglycerides and sort of clip off these fatty acids, making them free. Right? And this is just a little example of what just happened there. Now this is called a free fatty acid. There we go. I'll slow down so you can read it a little better. Free fatty acids do have flavor and aroma and are very important to many, many cheeses and their characteristic flavors and aromas and, and whatnot. So it's only after these enzymes can get to these triglycerides and make it through this layer, which is pretty easy when you're talking about cheese. There's lots of microbial action going on. Microbes are munching on it, releasing enzymes. Or maybe like in blue cheese, sometimes you homogenize the milk a lot so you get some more enzymes in there and to break it down to give that characteristic flavor. Well, what the takeaway from this slide would be, you know, enzymes clip off these fatty acids, making them free, causing the characteristic flavor of fat breakdown or lipolysis. Okay, moving on. This is a little bit of review what we just talked about. Lipases come in and clip off those fatty acids, making them free fatty acids. So where do lipases come from? Uh, they can come from the milk themselves. Milk itself has lipase. A lipoprotein lipase. It's found natively in milk. That's why if you abuse milk a lot and just leave it to its own devices, it will start to develop some of those lipolytic flavors. A uh, cheese maker can just add lipase directly. 
And that's just, you know, he buys it from a culture house and he just adds the live paste itself. You know, he may add calf live paste. He may add uh, kid goat live paste. Or he may even add lamb live paste. Each of these will give different flavor profiles and definitely depend on the milk you're using too. But for something like provolone, it's really common for them to add this to their milk, to their cheese while they're making it to get that characteristic uh, baby vomit aroma or pecan probably is a little friendlier term for that. And then finally, uh, for the purposes of our discussion, you may get it from microbes, right? Microbes themselves release enzymes that may break down fat. And this is really important for blue cheese and white mold cheeses too. So I'll say brie as well, right? But many cheeses have microbes added that give lipolysis to a certain degree, even like cheeses like cheddar. But blue and brie, the characteristic flavors are coming directly from this fat breakdown. So yeah, these are the three main places that lipases are introduced and that cause that fat breakdown that we discussed. Okay, so I've been showing you sort of those squiggly lines. Here's an actual more chemical look of what's going on. Uh, still pretty basic. This is just a, a line drawing. Uh, if you want to emit more chemistry with it, uh, it looks something like this. Now, a reminder, you know, this is where we're, we're cutting off these these lipases, you know, around right here. They're getting cut off around right here, and that's what makes them the free fatty acids, right? But this is a little easier to look at. It's a little less cluttered. Uh, the length of these fatty acids are really important as well, right? So when they get clipped off, you know, they become free fatty acids. So now these are free fatty acids here, free fatty acids right this length is really important uh, if you remember earlier from the picture these each juncture here is a carbon atom so you have one carbon two carbons three carbons four right and that length has a lot of effect on what flavor it has so right so the length directly affects the flavor and aroma it will give right to some degree right i make a lot of simplifications and talk about flavor it's very complicated but it's a general rule of thumb and these fatty acids, a bunch of things are happening to them. They may have interesting bonds or things attached to them that cause all sorts of interesting flavors. While we're on that subject, uh, I've developed this little tool. You can follow this link right here. Um, you know, shameless plug from our website. I plug that anytime I can. And it will let you adjust the length. You can drag this back and forth and adjust the length of this fatty acid. And it will tell you what the name is. It's This is the non-scientific name, caprylic acid. For those people who know about goats, caprine, capri, you may notice it does indeed have a goaty flavor and aroma. A lot of the medium chain fatty acids do. That runs around 6, 8, and 10 carbon atoms long. But feel free to check that out. I won't waste time here showing you how to do it. You can feel free. I'll put the link in the description or something. While we're on that subject about fatty acids and goat, goat milk, goat cheese, uh, the characteristic flavor, much of the characteristic flavor of goat milk and sheep milk and their cheeses come from fatty acids. Uh, these medium chain fatty acids here, these, these are medium chain fatty acids. Medium chain fatty acids are very important for the characteristic goat and sheep uh, cheese flavor compared to cow. And if you look, goat milk and sheep milk have much more than cow milk do totals. These are just all the varieties added up. All right, so this gives the characteristic flavor very much. All right, and a little fun fact about goats. If you, if you look at their eyes, their pupils are actually rectangles. I always thought that was an interesting fact. A little, a little freaky, too. Almost seem like aliens. But yeah, so the fat breakdown of these milks are very important for the characteristic flavor of these cheeses. So that tangy waxiness you get from goat cheese is because of this high amount of medium chain fatty acids. And of course, you know, I, I always give myself an out. There are other things that cause the the flavor as well. Branch chain fatty acids too. So you remember, here's that squiggly line that we talked about earlier, right here, right fatty acid. But there's extra things bonded to it, right? Even more carbon atoms. And that gives sort of the other interesting characteristics to the to the goat cheese and to cheap cheap milk cheese's flavor as well. Okay, moving on. Okay, this is this is this is all I have for today. Now we're just going to sum it up and talk a little bit about, you know, fatty acids, fat breakdown, and some of the characteristic flavors you get in many cheeses. Here we have provolone cheese. 
Here we have provolone cheese. And one of the characteristic flavors of provolone is that piquant baby vomit flavor. And that comes from something called butyric acid. Butyric acid is just a fatty acid. Right, that's just a really small, short-chain fatty acid that get clipped right off that triglyceride molecule. Here's a structure of it right there. So the fat breakdown directly causes that characteristic flavor of provolone. These other examples I have, it's not as simple. Here we have blue cheese, Bailey Hazen again, one of my favorites from Jasper Hill. And here that mold, the mold actually metabolizes, metab oh, that's not how you spell metabolizes, metabolizes fatty acids. All right, so the fat gets broken down, it takes those fatty acids, chews them up, and it spits out compounds like this. This is called 2-heptanone. And that gives the characteristic uh, sort of blue, I can't really put a word on it, the blue floral, almost fruity aroma that you get with blue cheese. So I'm just going to call it blue, the French spelling at least. And finally, we have uh, brie. Uh, this is brie or other white mold cheeses. Um, very much the same story as blue cheese. The mold breaks down the fatty acids. And this is actually a compound called uh, octinol. I won't give the actual name. It's a little obnoxious. But octinol here um, actually gives that characteristic mushroom aroma. And again, it's from that mold breaking down those fatty acids metabolizing them as well. Okay, well that's all I had for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed a little talk about lipolysis, fat breakdown, and some of the flavors you get. Thanks for listening.